Hello everyone. Welcome to the live ball session. My name is Yong Kang He. I'm a principal container specialist of Custom by Veeam. Hi everyone. My name is Anthony Lin. I'm the hybrid cloud specialist from Red Hat covering the region. Today we are very happy to be here to talk about OpenShift and how the backup uh, restore disaster recovery and also application mobility works for the containers. So Anthony, where typically customers deploy their OpenShift clusters? Right. So typically the customers that we have in Red Hat will be deploying the OpenShift platform on-prem or on public clouds such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM mm -hmm. Cloud, and more recently, right, we talk about things like managed service offering mm -hmm. uh, in the form of ROSA and ARO, uh, which basically will be the managed service offering for OpenShift running on AWS and Azure. I think that's a big change. Customer moving more and more workloads to the cloud. What are the trends you see? Right, so what are the trends these days, right? We know that from a survey from CNCF back in 2020, a lot of customers mm -hmm. are already increasingly moving stateful applications um, towards uh, the containers uh, platform, right? So mm -hmm. in fact, more than 55% already done that back in 2020. Two years on, more and more customers these days are also looking at some of the critical applications which are stateful in nature, mm -hmm. moving them onto the OpenShift uh, platform, for instance. Yeah, that's right. We also see the same trends. Let's say I got the Elastic Monitoring system running on OpenShift cluster. What are the typical components we will see? Right. So from an OpenShift perspective, we can do a deployment using source to image. We can do Helm charts. Mm -hmm. And of course, we do operators as well. In the case of Elastic, we are really looking at uh, what we call as the ECK operator, which mm -hmm. are found in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. There are different components to it. Right, so if you were to look at it, uh, we have things like service ports, the PVCs, right? Then uh, we will also have the persistent volume, right? So it actually can be uh, used under the uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, which is ODF. Yeah. And there are other components as well. For instance, the route, which will then allow you to go to the service and access the application. Mm -hmm. We have the config maps. Right, and we also have things like secrets. Mm -hmm. There are really quite a lot of different components that is available uh, within this particular namespace that we have, which is uh, Elastic Monitoring in this case mm -hmm. for this particular operator. Yep, that looks like a quite a complex. There's so many different moving parts. Is there any challenges? Right. So one of those things that are uh, increasingly here, some of the customers are telling us is the need to make sure that they have proper backup restore mm. disaster recovery when it comes to critical uh, stateful applications that is running on production OpenShift uh, clusters. So yeah. since uh, you know Kasten is very much into this space of a uh, backup, mm -hmm. you know what are some of the things that uh, can be done from mm -hmm. uh, the Kasten pers perspective? Yes, absolutely. Kasten, we actually we are the Kubernetes native software to help the OpenShift the cluster containers the backup uh, DR etc. So when we cast in KTN deployed to the OpenShift the cluster, you will see we are running in a separate namespace. Typically, we call casting dash io. The moment casting KTN deployed to the OpenShift the cluster, we will discover all of these Kubernetes resources, all of these objects, including the persistent volumes the uh, config map secrets etc when we are doing the backup we will take a snapshot of the whole application namespace so we will take a snapshot here and the inside of the snapshot it will include the application date and also the configuration and plus the data so after we take the snapshot so we understand in a situation if the whole namespace is gone or maybe the whole data center is gone, how we can recover. If you're not doing any extra task, you actually you can't recover. If the whole data center is gone, maybe somebody did accident or, or maybe deliberately deleted the whole namespace, including the snapshot all gone. So we allow you to make a copy of the snapshot to the object storage. In this case, we're using Nuba S3. 
So once we have another copy sitting from the Nova S3, we have actual protection. So in case the whole environment is going here, including the snapshot, we always allow you to recover from Nova storage. Well, that all sounds very nice, right? So in the case of uh, Red Hat, we also have this advanced cluster management uh, mm -hmm. solution, which basically manages uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters across different uh, environments. Uh, you know, it can be OpenShift uh, clusters, it can be AKS, EKS, for instance. Mm -hmm. So with this central management single pane of glass, uh, together with Nuba S3, mm -hmm. it does seem that we will be able to very easily back up and restore stateful applications across different uh, Clusters, you know, it can be on-prem to on-prem, on-prem mm -hmm. to cloud, for instance. In fact, this probably means that uh, Heston can be useful in the sense of uh, application migration as well, right? It, we it want to is. Yeah. That is actually one of the key benefits. We allow to easily take snapshot of the whole application here. Let's say I got another data center here. I want to move the whole Elastic Monitoring application to the target cluster here. Since all of my backup data are already copied to the Nuba S3 object storage, we allow you to do an import here. Once the import finish, we also allow you to restore the application. So I got the ECK application basically after you import, after the restore, the application will be up running. But obviously, you got a custom dash IO here, also running inside of this OpenShift cluster. So that's where we can allow you to recover from a different cluster. Right, that's really cool, right? So, um, you know, you and I, we were speaking two days ago talking mm -hmm. about how, you know, uh, Kasten can also help to simplify the upgrade and maintenance of uh, OpenShift clusters. Mm -hmm. So how does that all work? Yeah, that is another big use case, actually. In the Kubernetes world, customer keeps upgrading because the version keeps introducing a new version every three months or four months. Let's say I got a cluster running here, for the A, but I want to move to for the nine. If you do typically, if you do the in place upgrade, some of the stuff may be broken. The reason is that from for the A to for the nine, there are a lot of API changes, and your existing YAML file, all these configurations, working perfectly, but it might stop stop working in the new version for the nine. So casting here, we allow you to simplify the upgrade process. How it works? So let's say I got to create a new cluster. I just use the data center two as an example. I got an empty cluster photo nine here, and we allow you to simply use the same way, do the snapshot, and export to the object story, and then do the import. Once the import is finished, the application will be up running from the new cluster, which is running photo nine. So how we can make this happen? Because of casting, we have the powerful transformation engine. We understand there is API changes from photo A to photo 9. That's why when we do the restore, we know there is API changes. We will mask all these complexity, make sure the restore containers is up running. That's really cool, right? It is. Yeah, I think that's all we want to talk about for today. Thanks for watching. I hope it is useful to you. Thank you, everyone.